convention will come to order. Welcome back. Hope you all had a chance to have some good lunch. And uh, just a reminder that the voting is still open for the positions that we're able to vote for for convention. That is a different way of voting than the way we've been doing the polls. You need your simply voting ID um, and some other things. I, perhaps I'll move the mic over to Carrie Combs and she can speak a little bit more about the voting process, not for resolutions, but rather for the positions that are open such as chapter and other such things. Gladly. We have been getting some questions around election voting. Again, this is different from voting on resolutions, amendments, things in our Zoom webinar. This is how we vote for members of the mission council or positions elected to the standing committee or other boards. And that will be using the password that you should have received from me for your simply voting password. Again, that's a different process. Um, that's normally, in a normal year, you'd have it printed on your name tag and you would still vote online. If you are still having trouble, please get in touch with our help team who are working hard to connect you and make sure that you are able to vote. The polls will remain open until the end of our, of our afternoon break. So keep on voting. I think we've had just over half of our delegates who are eligible um, have already voted. So please take, find the time to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. I recognize Secretary Cosman for a resolution, for a motion. I move to take from the table resolution number two entitled clergy compensation. Is there a second? Second. Resolution number two has been taken off the table, so it comes back before us. Resolution two, just to remind you. Oh, we need to vote on that. I was just all ready to go. Look at that. Um, so excited. The, um, are we ready to vote or is there any discussion on? No, no, debate. no, there's no discussion. No debate. No debate. We're just bringing it back. All right, voting. We're voting whether or not we're going to bring it back. Yes, please bring, bring back resolution two or no, please don't bring back resolution two. I just got a note that said no audio. All right, so we're good. The voting has closed and we have 88% of those eligible to vote have voted that or that are voting have said yes, bring it back and 12% have said no, don't bring it back. So we are now at resolution number two. The question before us is resolution two as presented from the mission council. Further discussion. Is there any further discussion on resolution two? Please raise your Zoom hand if you would like to discuss any discussion. I recognize Robert Caroon. You would unmute yourself. I recognize Don Burr, if you would unmute yourself. I can just speak. Don, if you could just speak. Don Burr. Oh, wait a minute. Harrison West. Harrison, if you'd like to unmute yourself.
make sure that people can. Stacy doesn't care if they're a typo. No, because they're not wrong. Okay, so I'm going to touch it. So, ask again. Oh, hit. All right. All right. I'll go to Harrison West. No? I'll go to Steve McGrath. I'll go to Douglas Bowman. No, all right. Dexter Cheney. I'm unmuted, guys. Okay. I've been called upon. This is Kate Wesh. I'm here. Okay. Okay. We'll go to Kate Wesh. Kate Wesh from St. John's Essex. I would like to propose. A similar amendment from earlier, but with this reworded, and I've sent the uh, the reworded amendment to Stacy Cole. All right, Stacy will type in the amendment so we can see it before us. The reworded amendment. Hopefully, we looked at the uh, suggestions in the chat and attempted to incorporate everybody's suggestions to meet as many needs as possible. All right, the resolution that you're proposing says this, and I'll read it, and if it sounds right, then we'll, I'll ask you, if we get a second, I'll ask you to speak to it. The resolution amendment that you're proposing is this. The table entitled Minimum Cons Compensation Formula for Part-Time Clergy be amended to add a row for deacons vocational serving in Connecticut and then each organization with a serving deacon pay $525 a month to their deacon as remuneration. 25. Oh, 20, 25, sorry. 25 a month for, to their deacon as remuneration and that each such organization also make the required contribution to the church pension fund for the benefit of the deacon. That's the amendment that's been suggested. Is there a second? If you'd like to second this amendment, please raise your Zoom hand. Don Burr, your Zoom hand, you're on mute. Can you unmute? I second that. Thank you, Don. It's been moved and seconded. Kate, would you like to speak more to this amendment? I believe, uh, this is Kate, um, from reading all the comments in the chat, I believe that this allows enough uh, generality for all of the uh, different scenarios people suggested um, to be addressed. And so I, I hope that this language is um, uh, general enough that it that it will meet the needs that people were striving to meet. Okay, outstanding. Um, Eshmael Despod, you have your hand up. Eshmael. Pat Collar, you have your hand up. You done mute. Yes, I do. This is Pat. Pat, you you, do you have a um, speaking to the amendment? Yes, but I, I'm afraid that I would, I would speak to just add one word to this amendment. Okay, so, so you're proposing an amendment an to amendment the amendment. That's the in amendment. order. Okay, and and the amendment would be in the third line down comma, and that each, and the new word is Episcopal organization with a serving deacon, et cetera, um, because it's been a while since I worked at the church pension fund, but I, the rules still state that uh, Episcopal organizations are mandated to pay into the pension plan, but non-Episcopal organizations are not. There's a different process for um, or all clergy to pay into the plan if you're in an if you're employed by a non-episcopal organization. Okay, thank you, Pat. It's been moved. Is the amendment to the amendment seconded? If you'd like to second the amendment to the amendment, please raise your Zoom hand and I'll call on you. This is to add the word episcopal before organization. Ann Rothorn, is this a second to the amendment of the amendment? 
No, I would like to speak to the amendment. You'd like to speak to the amendment or the amendment of the amendment? All the we're amendment. speaking to now is the word Episcopal. No, I don't want to speak to that. I want okay, to have- I'll come back to you then, Anne. Thank you. Yep, thank you, Anne. Ben, are you, are you to second this amendment to the amendment? Madam President, I second the amendment to the amendment, which is to add the word Episcopal prior to the word organization with a serving. Thank you, Ben. So that it's been moved and seconded to add the word Episcopal to the amend amendment. Is there any further discussion on adding the word Episcopal? If there's any discussion on adding the word Episcopal, please raise your Zoom hand. Eddie Lopez. Bishop, I'm sorry, I had lowered. I was just gonna second uh, the Okay, the great. Uh, Paul Carling. Yeah, the... Oh, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Oh, uh, Madam President, Paul Carling. Um, I rise in opposition to the amendment, to the amendment. Um, I think it really goes against uh, our commitment to mission and to uh, working with all organizations that advance God's mission in the community. Um, I think that any technicality of implementing this um, amendment, this overall amendment, uh, is really something the church pension group in all of its wisdom and, and resources can do without our limiting it in such a way that um, if a deacon is working for a wonderful nonprofit, uh, that doesn't call itself Episcopal and yet is very consistent with our with our notion of diaconal ministry. I think CPG can work that out and we don't have to preempt uh, that problem and try to solve it for them. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Michael Denegris. Michael? Sorry, I apologize. Uh, no worries. Um, I, I just affirm you, uh, including the word Episcopal, simply because I, I, I'm in favor of not having to have a conversation after the fact for someone who has been working in the capacity for a nonprofit that's not a part of um, the pension fund. Uh, it seems prudent to make to make that clear beforehand, that uh, if you're operating through an, the organization that's subject to the to the pension fund, that it makes sense that it be an, an Episcopal organization as the as our charter as the whole process is. So I, I I just affirm the fact that using Episcopal organization makes sense. Thank you. Thank you very much, George Roberts. Oh my God. I don't know if this is in order or not, but I would like to call the question. All right, the question has been called on the second amendment that cuts off all debate of the amendment to the amendment. Is there a second on ending debate to cut off debate on discussion in the second, the amendment to the amendment? Is there a second to that? Adam seconded. It's been moved and it's been moved and seconded by Adam Thomas. Um, so it's been moved and seconded to cut off debate. All of those in favor of cutting off debate, vote in the vote yes. All those opposed to cutting off debate, vote no. All of those in favor of cutting off debate of the amendment to the amendment. <laughs> the um, 
Yes, yeah, so thank you. The, uh, the the polling is closed and the question before, so we have, we have voted to cut off debate. It needed two thirds of the vote to pass and it easily does that with 94%. So debate is cut off. So we now have the question before us of the addition of the word Episcopal to this amendment. All those in favor of adding the word Episcopal vote yes. All those opposed to adding the word Episcopal vote no. Voting is closed. <laughs> I forget what we're doing here. Question adding before the word adding the word Episcopal. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. All of a sudden, I just had a blank there for a minute. Um, we've added the word Episcopal. It passes in the majority 71%. We've added the word Episcopal. So now we are back to the amendment as amended. All right. The resolution before us is to add the table minimum compensation formula for part-time clergy to be amended to add a row for deacons, vocational, serving in Connecticut, and then each Episcopal organization with a serving deacon pay $25 a month to their deacons as a reimburse, as remuneration, and that each organization will all make the required contribution to the church pen pension fund for the benefit of the deacon. That is what is before us, is this amendment all those who would like to speak to the amendment, please raise your Zoom hand. Ann Rothorn. Ann, can you unmute yourself? Am I unmuted now? You are fabulous. Great, thank you. Um, th thank you very much um, for all of this conversation, everyone. And um, I would like, first of all, to, to um, give my huge thanks and respect for all the wonderful work that deacons do. They, mm -hmm. they do a lot of work and we thank them so much. On the other hand, I'd like to also say that deacons do bring to the church the cares and the concerns of the world. Um, they are essential. They bring our concerns, our compassions, our striving for justice to the world. And as such, they identify with us the laity. I would also like to point out that the laity with no compensation, no particular status, no insurance also work diligently and with passion um, in hospitals, prisons, homeless shelters, soup kitchens, um, emergency shelters for women and outreach of all kinds. Um, they don't have collars around their necks. They don't have any, any particular um, pensions. Um, they do it out of the goodness and the love of their hearts. And so um, I would like to vote for this, um, this, um, this um, resolution, but I would like to delete the amendment. All right, so you're speaking against the amendment. Yes. Thank you, Ann. Eddie Lopez. Okay, whatever. Uh, you know, Bishop, I had lowered uh, my hand for some reason. It just doesn't lower on my side. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. Thanks, Eddie. <laughs> Douglas Bowman, speaking to the amendment. Yeah, hi, uh, Doug Bowman, Grace Hartford. So I just want to ask, um, you know, we have many parishes that don't have the financial resources to have a full-time priest. Mm -hmm. And if you're putting a financial requirement on a deacon, would this have a chilling effect for more financially strapped parishes? I, I think it's something to think about. 
you, ra you, raise, you raise a good question, just raising the, the, the additional cost that, that would be to a parish. That, that is correct. Yeah. Um, you know, Are you asking that as a point of information that perhaps Kate could speak to? Or, or just raising it for the general? Just raising it for general thought. Okay, thank you so much. Ben Brockman. Ben? Ken Fraley. Ken Fraley? Is that Casey or Ben? Uh, that is uh, Casey. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now, Casey. Thanks. No, this is Ken Fraley from St. Peter's in South Windsor. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, Ken Fraley. Okay, I see where we've gone on the list. Thanks, Ken. Um, I would like to call the question. All right, the question has been called, which would end debate on this, on this amendment. Is there a second on calling the question? Please raise your Zoom hand if you'd like to be identified as the person seconding this. Stephen Holton, I see your hand up. Are you seconding the calling the question? No, Bishop, my hand was still up to speak to uh to, to Okay, ask nope, nope. Question. I'm just looking for somebody to call the question. Sorry. Sorry. If everyone could lower their hands unless you're going to um, offer a second, that would be most helpful. Okay, that's a process that's helpful, Stacy. Thank you. Douglas Bowman. Apologies, that was an error. My dog, <laughs> my dog hit the keyboard. <laughs> okay, no worries. No worries. It has to be spoken aloud. So, so anybody who said that in the chat could raise their hand. Right. Yes. Ann Rothorn, I see your hand up. Bishop Ron Kolonowski. Ron Kolonowski. trying to second. Ron, you're unmuted. Ron, Ron and D. Little. Hebron, and I do second this. Call Thank you, Ron. All right, it's been moved and seconded to cut off debate. So, all those in favor, in favor of cutting off debate on the amendment, please vote yes. All those not in favor of cutting off debate and wanting to continue this conversation on the amendment, vote no. All right, voting is closed. We need two thirds of it to vote to uh, cut off debate. We have 90% in the affirmative, so debate is cut off on the amendment. So now we have the amendment before us. All of those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying- it's the Amended resolution. No, we're just doing the amendment now. Right, amendment. Right, just the amendment. Right, all those in favor of the amendment, um, vote yes. All those opposed to the amendment, vote no.
All right. The amendment passes 79% to 21%. We now have before us resolution two as amended. So we have the resolution for G compensation with the addition of the amendment before us. Is there any discussion on resolution two as now amended? Please raise your Zoom hand if you have a question or comment to make on resolution two as amended. I see Steve McGrath has his hand up. All right, William Cuddy has his hand up. I'm Bill Cuddy from Christ Church in Guilford, and uh, I support this resolution. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. Casey Rousseau. Casey Rousseau, Trinity Hartford. I'd like to call the question. The question has been called. Is there a second? Please lower your Zoom hand unless you would like to second calling the question and cutting off debate. All right, I see Ron Kolnowski's hand up, Ron. Yes, I would like again to second the calling. All right. the question. It's been moved and seconded to cut off debate. All in favor of cutting off debate, signify by saying yes. All those opposed to cutting off debate, signify by saying no. Okay, 92% of the, those voting want to cut off debate, so we shall, all right. So now we have before us resolution two as amended. All in favor of resolution two as amended, please signify by saying yes. All those opposed to resolution two as amended, signify by saying no. Voting has closed. Resolution two is amended, passes 90%. Thank you all very much. Super great fun playing with Robert Tools of Orders and <laughs> Resolution <laughs> two with all of you today. Um, had some great fun there. And now I'm going to turn this over to Bishop Douglas for a little bit. Thank you, Bishop <laughs> Laura. And I do, before we launch into our third resolution, I want to thank Bishop Laura for her incredible grace and ability to manage that discussion, both with the tech challenges, but also amendment to the amendment, having it tabled, bringing it back. Um, it was just really beautifully done. So thank <laughs> best ever. So thank you. <laughs> I now recognize Secretary Kosman for a resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of resolution number three entitled Care for God's Creation and Creatures. Is there a second? And I think the way I would like to do this learning from Bishop Laura's good chairing is 
please raise your Zoom hand and also type it in the chat. Because if we see it typed in the chat and your hand zoomed, then I can just recognize it without having to run down the list. So I see uh, Jose Martinez Gonzalez, both raised hand and in the chat. So I'll take that as a second. So the question before us is resolution number three, care for God's creation and creatures. And I recognize the Reverend Dr. Anita Schell, a sponsor of the resolution who has up to two minutes to speak to this. So Anita, over to you. Thank you, you Bishop. Ra raise your Zoom hand, we'll be able to give you. Okay, great, thank you. Am I all set? Yes, we okay, can hear you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bishop Douglas. The world is a fragile place. It has always been so. What is changing here in Connecticut is a space in which we may discover our own roles in preserving this world, especially for those beings for whom fragility has always been a way of life. As recently as this summer and fall, midst a global pandemic and increased acts of racism and terrorism throughout the land, the incidence of climate disasters significantly increased. We watched in horror on our devices, whole communities in Louisiana being washed away by floodwaters due to rising sea level. We have seen entire neighborhoods and thousands of acres of forest land in, in California smoldering out of control from relentless forest fires. We have witnessed severe drought in the Midwest causing food insecurity and loss of land and employment to the farmers of our country. The reservoirs in Colorado are precipitously low. Climate change is widening the threat to global security and financial stability. The summer of 2020, Hurricane Isaias struck Connecticut with a force that caused my own parish in Old Lyme over $100,000 worth of damage with a single felled 54-year-old pin oak tree. Not only are these scenarios becoming more frequent and severe, they sure look apocalyptic. Is this the end of the world? This creation care resolution specifically addresses this moral crisis with concrete action steps for every single one of us. As with addressing COVID-19 and racism, these resolves are intentional and mindful practices we as people of faith in Connecticut can, must take to literally save our planet. While we know these realities exist, Concrete data received from the resolved steps of this resolution will enable us to better serve and support every community of our beloved ECCT, especially and particularly those for whom fragility has always been a way of life and now is exacerbated by these multiple crises. The data we collect will help us create a plan for building climate resilience in our churches and worshiping communities more critical than ever before. It is essential that all our houses of worship are prepared for the realities of the climate crisis. Currently, we are not prepared. When people experience how their lives and local communities are changing before their eyes, they're often moved to think and act differently from the way we have always done it. This resolution calls for such measurable actions. Think of them as mindful steps for every one of us. How then shall we live midst these crises affecting every member of creation? We have a plan for continuing life-saving work of reconciliation with creation by passing this resolution. I urge you to do so without delay. As Paul wrote in his second letter to Timothy, for God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Schell. The floor is now open for further discussion on resolution three. Please raise your Zoom hand and I'll call on Charles Beha. All right, would you like to speak, Charles, to this resolution number three? Charles? I'm gonna, he's muted. He's unmuted. he's unmuted. Charles, do you want to speak to resolution three? I'm gonna move on. The Reverend Merrick Zabriskie. Merrick, do you want to speak to resolution number three? 
No, I'm sorry. My hand was, I tried to lower it before. Sorry. Okay. Um, Casey Rousseau, do you want to speak to resolution number three? I do. This is Casey Rousseau, Trinity Hartford. I would like to offer a an amendment to the resolution. Um, I move that we, the second resol resolved of the resolution three wait, be replaced wait. with the following two resolves. I'm going to send this to convention at Episcopal CC. Uh, this, the first of the two resolves that I want are resolved that each congregation that has not complete, completed an audit within the last three years will complete an energy audit within the next two years and be it further resolved that each congregation will complete an energy audit every five years. K Casey, Casey, could you speak a little bit more slowly, please? We're trying I just to emailed it. To yep, I just emailed it. And if you can... Yes. Within the last three years, if they if they have could not you start already again in the second yep. resolve? So far, we have resolved that each congregation that has, that has not, not completed, completed an audit within the last three years. Three years. Uh huh. Okay, and then add another resolve that each congregation will complete an energy audit every five years. Okay, is that the sum total of your recommended amendment? Yes, if I may speak to it. No, nope, not, until we, have a, not until right. we have a second, Casey, mm -hmm. hold on. So we need to have a second. There's been some question asked as to whether the expedition or expediting, I should say, the seconds by both raising your hand and typing it in your chat qualifies as actually verbally saying it. I've checked with the chancellor and he says that it's good enough. So. Those of you who would like to second this, please raise your hand and also write second in the um, chat. I see Elizabeth Rousseau has her hand up and seconded it. So the, the amendment is seconded. Casey, you may now speak to it. Thank you. Uh, I just don't want to add any undue burden on parishes that have already recently completed an energy audit. Um, I have no problem with asking for them to report on that energy audit, but I also want them to, to do another one every five years. Thank you. The amendment is before us for discussion. Charlie Hamill, please introduce yourself and speak to the amendment. Actually, I was meaning to speak to the resolution itself. Sorry. Okay. If you're not speaking to the amendment, please, I know. I know. please I lower know. your hand. <laughs> Thank you. So, Amber Mill, are you speaking to the amendment? I'm sorry, I didn't lower my hand. Okay. Uh, pl please, once again, folk, we, we can really save time if, if we lower our hands if we're not speaking to the piece of business before us. Faith Flora, are you speaking to the amendment? No, I'm not, sorry about that. Okay, let's try it again. Suzanne Blank Caller, I believe it is. Blank of floor, are you speaking to the amendment? No, sorry. Okay. All right, folks. I really want to beg your attention here because we want this business to try to go as smoothly as possible. We've just called on six people who were not speaking to the amendment but had their hands up. We're going to have to go through this list every time. So please, 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 if you're not speaking to the business before us, please lower your hand. That way the chairs will not call on you and we can save substantial time. All right. I'm going... No, because some people, not now. So Charles Beha, are you speaking to the amendment? Still not on. June Aziz, are you speaking to the amendment? If so, please introduce yourself. Okay. St. John's Vernon, are you speaking to the amendment to resolution number three? Please introduce yourself. 
And Virginia Army retired of St. John's Vernon. I am speaking to the amendment. I support the amendment and I'd like to call the question. So you're speaking to the amendment. That's- In support. I couldn't hear. I can't hear. In okay. support of the amendment. Speaking to the amendment. You, you, you can't do both, can you? Mr. Oh, Chancellor? Yeah, she can, she can. So she has the floor. She, can she has the floor. The floor. Okay. Move the call to question. So she's speaking to the amendment. Yes. And and you've called the question on the amendment. That will require um, a second. Everyone, someone who wants the second. second. Thank you, Adam. So the question has been called on the amendment that is not debatable. So we'll go to our poll. And the question here, if you vote yes, if you want to stop debate on the amendment, vote yes. If you want to stop debate on amendment, vote no, if you want to continue debating the amendment. Calling the question succeeds, so we will now vote on the amendment. The amendment. Those of you who vote yes are in favor of the amendment, no is against the amendment. The amendment carries. We are now back to discussion on resolution number three as amended. And you should have that before you on momentarily on your screen. Resolution three as amended. And speaking to that, I'll call on St. Saviors. I believe that's probably Ian Montgomery, if I recall from this morning. Please unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Ian Montgomery, St. Saviour's Church. I haven't been able to change my screen name. I apologize. Uh, in referring to Douglas Bowman, I'm speaking against the resolution. Douglas Bowman in the chat writes, more potential financial liabilities for smaller parishes. As the priest in charge of a, a small parish, blessedly growing, um, we... There are many worthy causes and many worthy works that we can resolve to be supportive of as the Episcopal Church in Connecticut. I support the spirit of this resolution. I speak against it because of the obligations. Um, I speak against mandatory, uh, taking a, a special interest, which one may have, and making it mandatory for every body. And adding to the administration of small churches, which so many of us serve. In my own congregation, it's me and about five others who give time. And I think um, it puts an undue burden and is antithetical to the missional concept. If we're told what mission, what aspects of mission we must follow, and it doesn't enable us to be nimble if we're burdened by uh, mandatory aspects of mission. I yield the floor. Thank you. Our Charlie Hamill speaking to the resolution number three as amended, please. Charlie Hamill, Grace Church, Old Saybrook. Uh, I, I think that was a Douglas that spoke before me. Um, I'd like to, I know I'm not second in his motion, but I'd second uh, the heart of his suggestion. 
uh, clearly that this resolution speaks to wonderful things and wonderful work, but the obligations uh, put upon us are already burdensome. Um, our parish is already working on doing some of these on a, our own, and I wonder if it couldn't be the work of, of a, a Episcopal Church in Connecticut task force or other group to provide us with perhaps a booklet instead that suggests these things uh, that we could take on our own uh, if and when we wanted to in uh, the idea of sloughing off the obligations and going on on our own pace. Um, I agree with the undue burden of all sorts of bureaucratic obligations and uh, would vote against this resolution. Thank you. So you were speaking against the amendment, uh, uh, the resolution as amended. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Michael Denegris. Hi, it's Mike Denegris. Um, I, I'm, Could you introduce yourself, please, Michael? I'm Michael Denegris from Good Shepherd Church in Bristol. Um, I am in favor of this uh, um, simply because it, it does not specify which type of energy audit or, or how one is auditing themselves, because there are not only small parishes like ours that recently, in fact, thank you um, to, I forgot who it was that uh, changed that, um, that amended this resolution, but um, we recently did and are performing um, a lighting project that will significantly reduce emissions and uh, provide cleaner and less expensive light within the pair within the church but uh, you know that coupled with making you know our own um practices of weather stripping and 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 adhering to basic common practices should be enough to report back that we've done um an audit of our own um and system the problem i was having was that um, a worshiping community that does not necessarily have a building or necessarily have um, something to audit about would have more of a problem conducting an energy audit, let's say through the electric company or through the through another provider. So I'm curious whether we should make this resolution um, a statement of that that we had Michael, really you have ten more seconds. Just a, just a thought, putting it out there that I'm not sure this could be implemented with any kind of bite. So why not just resolve that we are going to uh, believe in this and and move forward in this manner? Thanks. Thank you, um, folk. I want to remind you, you have to, up to two minutes to speak to the question on the floor. Also, when you introduce yourself, could you please begin by saying whether you're going to you're speaking for or against? the question before us. That would be tremendously helpful to help people follow the, the kind of discussion. So once you introduce yourself, please say whether you're voting for or against or speaking for or against the question before us, and then you have the time left up to two minutes to complete your discussion. Thank you. Douglas Bowman, please unmute yourself and speak to the question, which is resolution Sorry. three as amended. Correct. Uh, Doug Bowman, Grace Hartford. I'm speaking against the amendment, uh, at, against the proposal as amended, specifically because of what Michael, a uh, guy named Michael said earlier. This energy audit is not defined. So what constitutes an energy audit? As, um, do I look around the parish hall and say to Rowena, hey, it looks great. We're done our, we're done our audit. So then at some point, somebody is going to define what constitutes an energy audit. And I, I, I don't think that several well-heeled churches are being sensitive to the needs of more financially strapped parishes. It's, it seems like it's another mandated expense. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Doug. Whitney Althoff. Thank you, um, the Reverend Whitney Althoff, Rector at St. Stephen's in Ridgefield. And I also stand against this resolution. I believe in the spirit of it, and I would love to see a resolution that speaks to our commitment to figure this out in the variety of ways that might need to be considered to live into the commitment, um, because I do believe we believe in this. Um, 
uh, for all the reasons that have already been stated um, to outline it with these various resolves um, takes us in a direction um, that I think people have, I, I have heard highlights um, the burden for smaller congregations and limited volunteer base, you know, groups in congregations. So I speak against this amendment um, but I will tell you personally, as the Reverend Whitney Altop, I'm truly in favor of the spirit of what this is trying to do. Thank you. Thank you. Gabrielle Johnson, please introduce yourself and say whether you're speaking for or against the resolution Hi. number three as amended. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Johnson from Christ Church in Guilford. And I would like to speak for the amendment, uh, sorry, for the resolution, because I think it's part of keeping our house in order um, and, and the importance of, of being aware of our impact on the environment as members of the Episcopal Church in Connecticut. I understand the financial concerns and I have been in parishes both rich and poor. And I think that just requiring an audit is not a, a financial burden because the, the electric company does them for free. I've seen in the comments that there's some sort of uh, organization that will do them for free um, through the church. I don't know whether that's true or not, but if we don't put our, you know, our money where our mouth is, it's never gonna happen. Um, but also the, the, the congregations themselves will need to decide you know, what they do in response to the energy audit. And, and they can still do that given this uh, resolution. And I think that we should perhaps look into along the road, finding funds to help smaller congregations to pay for the improvements that the audit points out. Thank you. Thank you, Gabrielle. Anita Shell, you do get to speak to this a second time. Thank you, Bishop. I appreciate all the opportunity uh, to hear different voices in the room, so vital. I want to just be very clear. In my experience in three previous parishes, not all of means such as in, at St. Anne's Old Lyme, it was not a burden not only to the congregation in terms of staffing to get this information, but these audits in my experience have always been free. So I appreciate the diverse views on this, but I want to just be clear that there should not have to be any financial cost to any parish and the all as well as there's not a burden in getting information. That's why the Creation Care Network is willing and ready to stand by to help with those resources. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Gus Shagel, please introduce yourself and whether you're speaking for or against the resolution as amended. Hi, Gus Schlegel, uh, St. John's in Stanford. I speak for the resolution. Um, Look, there, there's no mandate here on, on how to conduct this, this, this audit. It's to start a conversation. And, and for those parishes who say that they're, they're, they're strapped for funds, well, you know, this is a way to kind of take a look and say, oh, well, we're wasting energy. I, at, for my own house, asked the, the power company to, 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 to do an audit. They compared what I use to other people within the home, with, within the area. And it, um, I discovered that um, you know I'm I'm using a little bit too much, and so that makes me walk around, pull out uh, stuff that I'm not really using. So it can actually it actually saves me money. So it can save parishes that are looking to to to, to save money. It could actually save the money. I, I'm I'm opposed to a mandate from the ECCT that would say you need to conduct an audit in this way just because there's not enough information. This should be a way to start a conversation and um, and, and and not m mandate anything. Um, but but I, I this there's nothing in this verbiage here that says that um, anyone needs to go out and spend a lot of money 
or any money at all. It's it's to get people talking and take a look at them themselves and say, hey, how are we how are we wasting energy or how how are we energy efficient? I yield the to the floor. Thank you, Gus. D. Little Page, please introduce yourself and whether you're speaking for or against the resolution. Hi, I'm the Reverend D. Little Page, Rector of Trinity Church in Hartford, and just want to speak in favor of the uh, resolution and noting that others have that it's a broad definition of there's no definition of audit. And there have been concerns about um, smaller congregations having enough volunteer time. Um, it is about intentionality. So having a conversation is part of doing that audit. Um, the other thing I want to raise is that folks have talked about communities that don't own their building, but the energy audit is not limited to just a building. So thinking about the ways that we go about our mission, if you have a food pantry, how are we receiving our food, delivering food? Are there ways we can do that more energy efficiently? Um, so this, this is a very broad resolution, which I think is good because it allows flexibility for communities to engage it in the way that works best for them. That's all. Thank you, Dee. Chuck Hoffman, introduce yourself and for or against. I'm Chuck Hoffman, uh, commissional priest in charge with my wife Ellendale at St. John's Church in New Haven, and I call a question. That is in order. There, th that will need a second, please. Um, if you want to second this calling of the question, please both type second in the chat and raise your Zoom hand, and I'll look for correspondence. And if anyone on the table sees the same, let me know. Anita? Okay, thank second, a second. Okay, it, ha it has been seconded. The, the question that was Adam Thomas. The question before us is to cease debate on the resolution number three as amended. This will require a simple majority. So vote yes if you want to stop discussion. No, no if you want to continue. Two thirds. I'm sorry, two thirds. Thank you. The parliamentarian and Bishop Suffragan remind me <laughs> it's two thirds, <laughs> and their math is better than than mine. So. They'll they'll do the they'll do the math unless it's an easy one. <laughs> Thank you. I think I can do the math. <laughs> I don't need Brad and Laura for that one. Thank you. 95% uh, vote um, to cease debate. So the debate has been ended. The question before us is resolution number three as amended. If you're in favor of it, please vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The ayes have it at 72% to 28%, 259-4, 101 against. Thank you. We'll now move to the next order of business, and I ask the Secretary Cosman for another resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of resolution number four, entitled Fostering Right Relationship, ECCT, Indigenous Episcopalians, and our indigenous neighbors. Thank you. The question before us is resolution number four, fostering right relationship, 
the Episcopal Church, Indigenous Episcopalians, and our Indigenous neighbors. Is there a second? Chip Elliott's hand is up, and also he wrote second in the chat. Thank you, Chip, for being right on that. It is seconded. And speaking in favor of the resolution is one of the proposers, I think, the Reverend Bob Bergner. So, Bob, you have two minutes. Thank you, Bishop Ian, and thank you, members of convention. We're actually going to show you a video in a moment, but I wanted to make a brief introductory statement beforehand. As all of us probably know, the history of interaction between Europeans... You still have only two minutes. Mm. Huh, that's not exactly what I understood. So in that case, I will be even more brief. Um, we're going to show a video that includes words I'll from... I'll stop counting until the video starts. How about that? That would be great. Thank you. I believe that's correct, Mr. Parliamentarian, right? Two minutes. Two minutes for either a video or a speech or however people want to present the resolution. So you're gonna let me make a statement and then start counting, is that correct? So you have two minutes. Okay, very well. Um, I will just point out that the video includes words by uh, three daughters of residential school survivors, descendants of the Abenaki people, and members of parishes. Sorry, in the CCT. okay. So three minutes for the presenter. <laughs> Was there more information there? No. We'll uh, we'll let the video roll. Okay, and also to say that. The video does have some printed text in it, which passes rather quickly due to these time constraints. So I believe Rachel Thomas is going to put a link to the video in the chat if people want to be able to watch it at a more leisurely pace and take in the text in a more comfortable manner. Thank you very much. We can roll the video. Thank you. Connecticut. The state takes its name from the river that runs through it, an anglicized version of the name given by the native Mohegan Pequot people, Quanatucket, meaning Long Tidal River. Historical evidence suggests that native people made their home in this region for as much as 12,000 years. At the dawn of the 1600s, 16 tribes led fruitful lives within the state's present day boundaries. Yet, the history and story of the land identified by this name is most frequently told by the later occupiers of it, those who migrated from Western Europe beginning in the early 17th century to claim the land as their own. Over time, people native to the region were driven from ancestral lands and hunting grounds that sustained their communities. Reservations were created to contain and control indigenous residents, and in the 19th and 20th centuries, intentional efforts to extinguish the culture of native people were perpetrated through residential schools for tribal children. Hear the voices of indigenous people in our midst, daughters of a residential school survivor and members of Episcopal churches in Connecticut. <laughs>
This resolution asks this convention to take deliberate steps to listen to their voices, acknowledge the sins of society and the church, and open an opportunity to seek a course toward healing and reconciliation. What would it take to foster right relationship with our indigenous neighbors and with the indigenous members of our Episcopal family? What would it take to acknowledge past wrongs committed against them, to ask for forgiveness and to begin again? Walking together, how can we make things right? Thank you very much. The question before us is resolution number four, fostering a right relationship, the Episcopal Church, indigenous Episcopalians, and our indigenous neighbors. If you'd like to speak to the question, please raise your Zoom hand and when you are called <laughs> upon, introduce yourself and speak to whether, and then say whether you're speaking to, for or against the resolution. I recognize Tara Shepley. Hello. I'm the Reverend Tara Shepley, priest in charge of St. George's Church in Middlebury. And I'm speaking in favor of this resolution. I support this resolution from a special perspective as a pastor to several indigenous Episcopalians and their extended family in my congregation. And today I raise my voice with their voice for the call for indigenous Episcopalians and our indigenous neighbors to be acknowledged and remembered, to create safe spaces for our indigenous sisters and brothers to gather and to share their stories and to learn and to understand the past, to heal and to explore new ways forward and to create a task force made up of indigenous Episcopalians and their allies to express their desires and to guide the ECCT as we pursue right relationships. I thank you for your support. Thank you, Tara. I recognize Adam Yates. Hello, um, this is the Reverend Adam Yates, St. Faith's Anglican Church, Vancouver. Uh, I speak in favor of this resolution <clears throat> here in the Anglican Church of Canada um, we've been working on this uh, subject of reconciliation with our Indigenous uh, neighbors and First Nations um, for many years now. And this past summer uh, was a, a traumatic one in Canada with the rediscovery of thousands of unmarked graves of children at residential schools, um, residential schools that we have back in the United States, in fact, many times more, and that were run by um, religious denominations including the Episcopal Church. I think this resolution is um, perhaps a first step uh, on a long road to uh, recognize the role we have played in the church and as a country in the um, attempt to exterminate the indigenous peoples in our lands. Thank you, Adam. And it's nice to have your voice back in our convention. Mm -hmm our former Secretary of Convention. Thank you, Adam. God bless you in Vancouver. Uh, Ann Rothorn. Yes, my name is Ann Rothorn. I'm a delegate from St. Anne's Old Lyme, and I would like to support this resolution for the following reasons. We are in the process of righting ancient wrongs. It is long, long overdue. The native population of Connecticut has been systematically had their land stolen from them. They have been enslaved, killed by sword and disease. In 1637, uh, the Connecticut colony declared war on the Pequot people and 500 people were killed in the Mystic River massacre. This almost wiped out the Pequot tribe. And the abuse has just continued ever since. Now there are just five recognized tribes in the state of Connecticut, but maybe there were something like 18 tribes. And so this resolution really calls us to begin writing ancient um, 
ancient wrongs. It calls us to acknowledge um, uh, the, the role of our ancestors in um, the abuse of the native people. It calls us to educate ourselves about the past and it explores asks us to explore and implement ways so that we can, can um, foster better relations. We can never completely right the wrongs, but we can, we can go from, from here on. And also to designate one Sunday a year to, to provide resources and to have a liturgy that celebrates our native population. So for all of these reasons, I hope that um, the convention will vote yes to support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Bill Cuddy. Thank you, Bishop Ian. I um, support this resolution. I would also add that um, there are many, many people, other not in Connecticut, uh, South Dakota is a prime example where I believe that the uh, Episcopalians are the largest religious group in that state and where the church has a long history of providing education to people in that state. And we have recently also last year uh, provided th their current bishop from St. John's in Essex. And I think that there are many things that people can do right now, whether it's through their parishes or through themselves to find and financially support uh, worthy, um, worthy organizations that are seeking to uh, improve the conditions and lives and education of uh, Native Americans. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Bill. Steve McCausland. <laughs> uh, what a delight it is to be with uh, you here today. Um, I am. Can you introduce yourself, please, Steve? Oh, sorry, yeah, Steve McCausland. I'm from uh, uh, St. Anne's Parish in Old Lyme, and uh, there are several people in front of me who have spoken today, including uh, Anita, our priest. And I have uh, would just like to testify to the uh, the gifts that uh, Native people have shared with me. These are firsthand experiences. I spent several years living with the Cree up in Hudson Bay in Quebec, and uh, and they were just very welcoming and took me into their homes and families and. Uh, taught me how to uh, live in the bush as a Cree person and experience some of their spiritual dreams and healings and so forth. I was sitting around the teepee one afternoon with a couple of my young friends and, uh, and one of them said, Steve, it must be very hard to be an Indian in Boston. And I said, to tell you the truth, Ed, I, there, I don't know any, I think we killed them all. And there was no anger, no, uh, you know, incense or anything like that about it all. It was just a, uh, whoa. And that was the end of that conversation. I'm so glad to be here that you're taking this up and uh, caring for creation at the same time. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Whitney, and please introduce yourself and whether you're speaking for or against the resolution. I would like to call the question. I'm the Reverend is, Whitney Altop from St. Stephen's Ridgefield, and I'd like to call the question. Thank you. That is in order. We'll do our exercise with respect to seconding the calling of the question. Okay, I think I see Mo Letterman. Thank you. It's been, the question has been called and seconded. This is not debatable. It needs a two-thirds majority. I got it right this time. Um, and so the question before us, if you want to cease debate over resolution number four on indigent on fostering right relationship. Please vote yes to cease debate. No, if you want to continue discussing.
Overwhelmingly, I can do the two thirds again. Um, <laughs> overwhelmingly, we want to stop debate. And so the question before us is resolution number four, fostering right relationship, the Episcopal Church in Connecticut, Indigenous Episcopalians and Indigenous neighbors. If you're in favor of the resolution, please say yet yeah, vote yes. Against the resolution, vote no. The resolution carries. Thank you. I now recognize Sec Secretary Kostman for another resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of resolution number five entitled Sharing the Work of Creating a Safe Church. Thank you. The question before us is resolution number five, sharing in the work of creating a safe church. And I believe speaking to it is one of the, oh, I'm sorry, thank you. Is there a second? And please exercise our raising of hand and the thing, Chip Elliott, thank you for being right on it with the seconds. So it's now been moved and seconded. And we will go to, I believe it's Whitney Alltop, who is the, um, one of the proposers who will be speaking to this. Am I correct? Oh, oh and also, the Reverend Amjad Samuel. So Whitney and Amjad, you have two minutes combined. Is that correct, Mr. Prometer? Yes. So um, I am the Reverend Amjad Samuel from St. Paul Shelton. And the ECCD model policies were actually set by the last general convention. They rightfully consider all vulnerable populations and what processes the local congregation can undertake to protect the most vulnerable. This includes various background checks for volunteers within the congregation. All background checks take place through a specific, a specific organization and have a cost associated with them. These policies are ideal, considering every possible population's needs and the requirements for providing the most foolproof safety. And I'm the Reverend Whitney Alltop, Rector at St. Stephen's in Ridgefield. And I'd like to add that whereas we universally and fully commit to the need to provide a safe church for all people, the expectations outlined in the model policies are costly and onerous for local congregations to undertake on their own. They assume volunteering happens in congregations with clear long-term commitments and well-written job descriptions. Furthermore, they lack direction for the nimbleness necessary for congregational life to flourish. This resolution proposes that a working group of ECCT staff and congregational leadership in our diocese develop a way to more effectively distribute the work of providing a safe church, acknowledging the limits of congregational leadership and the needs of the vulnerable so that we can more effectively meet the model policies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amjad and Whitney. The resolution before us is resolution number five, and that is sharing in the work of creating a safe church. Please raise your hand, your Zoom hand for discussion. And I recognize Jen Pilot. Good afternoon. This is the Reverend Jen Pilot of newly minted Intentional Episcopal Community Seabury and All Saints Meriden. I would like to speak in favor of this resolution. Um, with the, the way that the background checks go, I can't seem to get a straight answer about whether documentation status is something to be considered and would love for this resolution to help figure some of those things out because documentation status shouldn't prevent somebody from being able to volunteer at church. Thank you. 
Jen, just for a question of clarification, documentation status, you mean as to immigration status, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Additional discussion, please raise your Zoom hand. There's a question whether someone in the email YouTube is raising a question. Is that, just wants to speak to this. Okay, do so you have? We have somebody monitor YouTube. Yeah, I don't, there's no, no Okay, YouTube. then I've been misinformed. There's another comment. There. Okay, thank you, Erica, for clarifying that. I do not see anyone else wishing to speak to resolution number five. So that's the question before us, which is sharing in the work of creating a safe church. We will now vote on the resolution. If you're in favor of creating a working group, please vote yes. If you're against the working group, please vote no. The resolution carries with 91%. Thank you very much. We will now have a 10 minute break. Actually, I'll squeeze it to 12 minutes. <laughs> and uh, we'll come back at 25 minutes of four and take up resolution number six on young adults. And Bishop Laura will be back in the chair. <laughs> 10 minutes, um, see you in a bit, thanks.